Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, today we're going to work a, a bit with the uh, reclaiming lost territory exercises and take them in a little deeper and uh, iron out some of the kinks there. And I want to also uh, go deeper into the uh, unkinking the hose and, and how that fits into to everything. And I think we'll probably start with that because that will then inform everything else because that is uh, uh, allows you to, to ground the energy and allows it to circulate freely throughout the body. So uh, just to re recapitulate, the three pillars are, number one, central equilibrium, or no, actually, number one, energetic coherence. That's it, energetic coherence. So, and how do we get to energetic coherence? Lots of ways to get there. What's the fastest way that I know? Just point and reach with your index fingers. We've covered this uh, lots of times, so that, uh, uh, but that if you point, reach, and feel your index fingers, then you immediately get the energy within the system coherent, and you also initiate the process of, of establishing tensegrity in the, in, the, in the system, in the connective tissue system, which immediately takes your, your game up to a whole new level. And then uh, the second one is central equilibrium, and that's where you, you're feeling the weight over the balls of the feet, you reach with the knee wand point at the, at the crown of the head, and you open the jade pillow gate and you center your, your, your body's weight over the balls of the feet. And that's just to get started. That's just to get you familiar with the central equilibrium. Once you get central equilibrium, once you get the, get the joke there, then you can do it in all kinds of shapes. It doesn't, you don't need to be perfectly vertical to make that happen, but you want to have that as your reference point. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. You know, first you just want to you just want to not fall over, and then uh, after a while, then you're going to do wheelies and flips and all kinds of stuff like that. But but first you want to get it so that you uh, you can just not fall over. Then the third pillar is opening or to uh, unkinking the hose, and that is removing those major blocks in the system that prevent the chi from flowing freely throughout the whole system. The, and the three major points that we look at there, uh, the uh, qua, getting the sung qua, releasing the hip joint so that you're able to then unblock the north-south flow of energy. That's, that's, uh, that's maybe the biggest one. Then the aforementioned jade pillow gate. So at the base of the, at the base of the skull, the, uh, that point there. So if your chin is elevated, you're kinking the hose most likely. So you want to reach with the knee wand point and tuck in the chin a little bit so that you're not like this, you're more like this. And when you do that, you lengthen the spine and open up that, that energy flow into your head and it makes you, your brain feel very happy about that. And the third uh, major kink is in the shoulders and the shoulder tension is the, is the death of us all. So uh, if we reach with the elbows, we activate the elbow chin, then we can create a space in the shoulder joint and that opens that up and then it, uh, allows the energy to flow much more freely at that point. So we got those, those are, those are our key points. So let's, uh, let's start that. We'll do the reclaiming lost territory exercise. And uh, I would encourage you to, uh, if you have questions or need clarification on anything, just yell out and, uh, or uh, let Maria know. And then we'll, uh, uh, I guess with the text, was that the way to go with the, with the chat? And then uh, we can uh, we can break it down as we go along. Okay, let's start with the uh, with uh, the qua exercise. So, but here we're going to 
to throw a little wrinkle onto that to get to all uh, unkinking all the points on the hose here. So start with your weight on the ball of your left foot, pick up your right heel, okay? And reach with your knee wand, open the jade pillow gate, reach with your elbows. Knees are, are released, you're allowing your body to sink down. So our, we, our habit is to push away from the earth and now we're doing the opposite. We're, we're dropping down so that we're feeling into that yin support rather than the yang push away, it's a yin release down. And so as you, we're gonna do a, a variation on, on what we usually do with, the, with this. And as we feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and we reach with the knee one and reach with the elbows and spiral down to the left very slowly and hang out there and just feel into that, release into that. And the important thing here is that whenever I go, I'm not pushing my butt out to the side. Way to check on it is take your finger, run it alongside your thigh and look down and see where the point is, what you're pointing at. And if it's outside your foot, you probably got it wrong. So notice how mine is about, I'm pointing to a spot about four inches wide of my of my foot. So I make that adjustment. I, oh, so now I do it and, oh, I'm pointing right down. I got the outside of my foot. My hip is lined up with the outside of my foot. And then back to center. Good, and then feel it reach with the knee one and spiral down to the left. Reach with the elbows. And release into the qua. Feel sung qua and make any necessary corrections to get yourself back into alignment there and then back to center. Now feel spiral down to the right and still on the left foot, reach with the elbows, reach with the crown of your head and open up the groin area as you do that. All the way to still in your left leg and just feel yourself sinking down. And this is getting you acclimated to using muscles which you don't use maybe ever. And so now you get a chance to use them and your body will say, hey, what's this all about? But you go back to center and you say, hey body, it's okay. We're trying something new here. And spiral down to the right, reach with the elbows, reach with the, reach with the crown and release down into the core, sung, and then back to center. Good, now feel the ball of the right foot, your back foot, pick up your left heel, okay, and reach with the, the knee one, reach with the elbows, spiral down to the right. And really, really release down into that, and just get the feeling of hanging out there and sitting down in that right leg. Again, you want to reach down and and point down and make sure that you're not your butt's not sticking out. You want to go straight down and spiral and then back to center. And then spiral down to the right. Reach with the elbows, reach with the crown. And feel the connection here and you're asking about grounding the energy, Diane, and this is what we're doing right now. Okay, the energy is going all the way through the uh, bubbling well point into the earth and then back to center. So we, by releasing and spiraling down, getting sung, we are able to take that energy and we're allowing the yang chi to go down and the yin chi to come up and spiral down to the left. Reach with the, the crown, reach with the elbows. You can bring your elbow, your arms out a little bit and just feel, feel the chi. And feel also the, your leg is starting to say, hey, what's going on here? And back to center. But this is something that you'll get used to the more you do it. When I was back, when I was 
training for tournaments and stuff like that, I would hang out in this posture for quite a long time, you know, just spiral down and really get into Sung Kwa so that I felt like, oh, I could I could stay here for, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes longer. And you just want to be able to feel that and just feel the chi cooking in your arms as you do that and back to center. Good. And step back with your left foot, pick up your front heel, your right heel. And we're going to start with the left foot this time. So feel the set the ball of the foot, set the knee, the left knee, all the weights in your left leg, reach with the knee, the knee one, reach with the elbows and spiral down to the left. And just as you're doing this, you want to be very conscious that your your weight doesn't shift off of the ball of the foot. It doesn't go back in the heel as you turn and back to center. And feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down, reach with the elbows, reach with your knee one, and release. Sitting down, getting like you're sitting on a bar stool. And back to center. And spiral down to the right. Reach. Feel the tensegrity in the system. Feel the chi buzzing, flowing, cascading, and back to center. And feel your root. Spiral down to the right. Feel that connection to the earth. If you get the sweet spot through the ball of the foot, you get your central equilibrium lined up just right. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing. It's kind of like riding a bike. There's that sort of sense of disappearing of effort and back to center. There's no struggle involved. Good. And then feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, pick up your left heel, Okay, you want to check your your butt in point down and just make sure that you're you're lined up correctly and then spiral down to the right. Notice that my knee is pointing that way straight ahead and my body is turned uh, on a 45 and back to center. So all the actions happening here but I'm supporting it by the elbow gin, supporting it by my reaching with my knee one. Feeling that, that contact through the ball of the foot and activating the earth chi and back to center. And then spiral down to the left. Feel the power the connection, and back to center. And spiral down to the left. Really sink into that, and back to center. Good, and then back up. Feel the weight 50-50 and just feel a neutral posture. Also, at the same time, feeling the weight of the balls of the feet, set the knees, reach with the, the knee one, reach with the elbows. And just let the energy move through you. Okay. So if anybody has any questions on, on that, so uh, be good to, uh, to articulate now. Um, and then we can, before we go forward, Nope, we're good. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I don't. Diane, did, Diane wants to say something, and I want to. And mm -hmm. Diane uh, muted. Uh, okay. Well, You're on, I, on, on mute, Diane. You're on mute, Diane. You're on mute. <laughs> there you go.
Okay. Uh, okay. There All we right. go. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got to find the chair. Wait a minute. <laughs> so what I noticed that really helped me ground the energy was it was almost like reaching with my tailbone at the same time I was reaching with Niwan. And Good. that helped open it so that I could then feel the energy move on down. Beautiful. Beautiful. You have intuited uh, another important lesson there, the Wei Lu point, okay. Okay, okay. which is, uh, is, is, is also important. So you, okay. you kind of, you kind of, you kind of stretch, yeah. stretching the spine yeah. like a rubber band, right? You're opening up all the yeah. vertebrae. That That's what that. it felt like, yeah. Yeah, so, and the, which is very good for you in all kinds of ways, so. Okay, great, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Beatrice. I just want to double check. So when we're obviously where our knee is aligned with our balls of our feet and but we're turning our body so we're folding on the qua and just obviously in order to do that our other our other foot has to pivot on the floor, correct? Yes. I just, yeah, just wanted to doesn't have to, but it, it can. The important thing is you really are, are releasing in this exercise, you're let, letting that other that other hip go. You're not there's no weight in it, so it can it can just follow along. Is that good? Great. Anybody else? All right, moving on. Okay, so next we're going to we're going to open the jade pillow gate. So in profile, the whole whole thing is you reach up with the knee one, but then you lift the chin and drop the chin really touch your chest with your chin your collarbone and get that so you're lengthening you're reaching up with the knee one as you as you move through that you're pivoting from the atlas Good. Okay. And then also we can do, uh, uh, I've been calling it rooster head, but I saw a wild turkey at, at, in the park the other day and I actually like that, uh, like that image better because it does this and that starts to, to just push it to face out and then back. And this is how those guys walk. They kind of, the head would go forward and back. We're going to have a turkey head. <laughs> and now. Good. Okay, and then roll your head. We're going to explore the range of motion. Again, reaching upward, lengthening the spine as you do it. Good, reverse it. Notice where you're, where you're running into kinks, obstructions. And just kind of nibble around at those. Rick, can I get a note here? Okay, note. If you find this difficult, do it slowly. You just do two rotations slowly where you're really feeling into the reach. It'll do you more good than doing a lot of uncomfortable rotations quickly. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to, uh, so here, reach out with your right arm, reach with your head. Okay. And what you don't want to do is, is go like that. Although that's, that's another exercise, which is perfectly valid in its own way. But for this one, we just want to get that, and you can move your arm around and find out how it moves, how, what position get, does you the most good. You, I like to bend my wrist sometimes, just kind of give a, you know, a stretch there, feel, feel where the tissues need to be elongated. Good, and go to the other side. 
And you can also adjust your the position, the angle of your head. That's what I was saying. But yeah, you, angle of your arm and the angle of your head. Okay, good. So, uh, so now you stand up, and we're going to stack up your spine and then release it nice and slow. Just bring it down. Use your breath. So again, you're reaching up with your knee one, reaching down with your Wei Lu. You're, you're lengthening the spine as you do this. And tuck your chin in so that you're really, it's a tight coiling, un, uh, unwrapping. Keep the spine straight underneath as you let go. So it's not a stretching so much as a releasing exercise. Check your legs, check your butt, see where tension is there and continue to drop. Just allowing the weight of your body do the work for you. Then straighten your knees and continue to drop. Don't force anything, just allow the weight of your body to, to lengthen the tissues gently. Good, then bend your knees, sit down and slowly come up, straightening out. Okay, bring your hands up, arch your back, open the shoulders, open the chest, breathe. Yeah, let the weight of your arms open up the shoulders for you. And then back up and round your back. So you're getting this kind of effect. And then arch your back open and round your back and open. Flexing and extending your spine. Creating flexibility, spine flexibility, creating space between the vertebrae. Getting your body acclimated to that flexibility. Opening the shoulder joints, the chest. Good. Okay. Knocking on the door. Set the elbow and boom, like that. The other hand, like this. One, two. One, two. So you're opening up the chest, opening up the shoulders. Good. All right. Let them hang. So just let your arms hang, but. Bring your elbows out, so reaching with your elbows, so you're opening up the shoulder joint. And your arms aren't just hanging limp, but they're, they, they have a shape to them. So just feeling that, feeling the chi in your arms as you do that. And this allows the tissues to unwind. All the kinks can start to disappear at a very uh, minute level. Good. So now, uh, big circles. And what I encourage is to move in the direction of a full squat on this. So let me demonstrate first. So the idea is, is I want to arch the back, hands come down and drop down 
keep my head up and drop down to a full squat and then up again. So use your use your own judgment on your uh, on what you're capable of, but that's the direction we're working because having that creating that range of motion there in your legs is is very helpful as you as we get older. All right, so here we go. So one, yeah, arch the back and then come down and then up. So if you find yourself looking at the floor, pick your head up. Good. And reverse it. Oh. Reach out, reach with your elbows, sink and up. those elbows out, reach, open the shoulder joints, relax the shoulders, reach with the knee wand, feel the balls of your feet, feel the chi moving through your arms, through your legs, through your torso, feel the vitality, feel your root, feel that earth and energetic earth connection. Good, okay, so now small circles. Hands come up and out to the sides. So what you wanna do is bring your shoulder blades together and back. Drop your elbows. So notice that there's a kind of a bow shape here. I'm not doing this, right? Nor am I doing this. Palms are down, elbows are dropped. Reach with the knee one. Shoulder blades together and back and very small circles. So you're drawing little baby circles there with your fingers. Shoulders should be relaxed. So you're opening, allowing the chi to move through the shoulders rather than using your, your shoulders to do the work. Good. Palms up and go the opposite direction. Good. And relax. Let them hang. Feel the chi. Feel how grounded you are. Okay, now give me 27, right where the collarbone meets the sternum, the fleshy part. Look for a, a tender spot if you got one. Press in. You can also thump it. There you have two different uh, effects. The thumping gets us excited, the, uh, the uh, pressing in sedates it. And uh, Feel the, uh, the thymus point behind the second rib. So you're reaching through your rib to the, the gland behind it, which manufactures uh, T cells for your immune system. Something that we can all use a little bit of this at this point in time. And then go into the spleen point, find a tender spot there on the side of your rib cage. This whole area is spleen, so don't, uh, doesn't have to be right on the meridian. We're just talking the, uh, the spleen area. And this is great for metabolism. 
not just food and drink, but also life experience, allowing you to process stuff that might get sticky. Good. Kidney, stomach. Or, uh, stomach two. So here, reach out with your elbows, press in on the underside of your, of your cheekbones, reach out with your elbows, feel the balls of your feet, reach with the knee one, and feel that whole body energetic connection as you do this. Very powerful point, very powerful uh, posture. It's a real, uh, kind of like the Superman posture, only on steroids. Good. So lift up with your middle finger on your third eye, lift up with the other middle finger on your, on your navel. Breathe into the nose, out to the mouth. Bring your arms down, feel the neutral posture now. Just hang out there for a second. And just feel the, the chi is excited and excitable. This is where, this is where we wanna to be to get started. Anytime you're doing your Tai Chi form, you wanna have your chi excited and excitable. So that when you're doing a form, you're circulating the chi. You're not looking for it. It's already there. Now you just matter of, okay, where do, where do I want to use it? What gin do I want to develop with my, with my practice? And then step in. Deep breath. Inhale. And press down and disappear the chi. Dissolve into the mist. Okay, grab a seat. That's your basic, basic set for the reclaiming lost territory. You know, we add things accordingly. Uh, you know, according to need, but uh, that uh, that'll get you started. May I say something? Please. I just want to make the point that the whole purpose of this warm up is to reclaim lost territory, and by lost territory we mean places in our body where the chi is not flowing, where it's blocked, where it's gotten stiff. So when you're doing this particular set. You're not trying to build muscle. You're not trying to lose calories. You're trying to open up the energy gates, right? So uh, if you really, you know, have that in mind as you started, that that's your thing. You know, it's not how many repetitions you do. It's like if you notice that you're kinky in a spot, see if you can just adjust a little bit on that exercise to get it to be unkinky. That's the whole point, right? I just want to... Thank you. Well said. Well said. Cool. They, they like it. <laughs> a lot of thumbs up. A lot of thumbs up. <laughs> Some, Scott has something to say. Scott. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, report in. Uh, so I was making my small circles too big. Um, that was one problem. And what Maria said really helped. Thank you very much, Maria. That, that, that uh, that's going to make all the difference. Good, good. Yeah, when you're doing the small circles, imagine you have a pencil and you're drawing a little, a tiny little circle there, and you're moving entirely from your your rotator cuff. So it, you know, and you want to like, you know, you know as small a circle as you can get, and uh, that will uh, 
you know, but you can also play around. You can do bigger if you want to, but that, uh, that, that helps. So you're, it's, it's learning to relax and control. Opening, opening up the, the shoulder joints. Good. Okay. Um, so let's see, were there other questions or so we, Lynn? do we, Lynn, Lynn. So that was lovely. Thank you. Um, when I was doing the small circles at the end after all well, my, she was excited. I was, um, finding the circles happening inside in my abdomen as well as outside in my arms. Um, it felt fine and not problematic and kind of cool. Um, but I was just wondering if you had any comment on that. Uh, it sounds cool to me. So, yeah. <laughs> you want to show us how? <laughs> that's weird shit all the time. Yeah, you know, internal, external, yeah. No, that's, that, 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 that's stuff like that is happening. And the fact that you're able to tune into it is, you know, is a pretty high level of awareness to be able to to tune into that. So, you know, uh, yeah, cool. Do it. Yeah, I, I, not, not problematic at all. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Uh, anybody else? All right. Uh, Diane, did that ha handle your question about the, uh, the grounding the energy? It did? Good. You're still, you're still on mute. I know, I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, it did. And and reaching down through the base of my spine, I as I was doing the rest of the exercises was really helpful. Right. Um, and it helped me actually be able to release a little tightness in my in the qua. So that's mm -hmm. where I think I'll work. That was helpful. So Good. thank you. Good. Uh, that uh, exercise we did at the start there with the uh, uh opening uh the unkinking the hose exercise Did everybody uh uh did that work for everybody the elbows the reach the knee one and and the slow claw cool okay great okay um cool so let's uh let's move on to uh, something else i wanted to talk about is um Grounding the experience in something physical uh, is helpful in a lot of ways in that body, mind, spirit integration, to be able to think of it in, in scientific, clinical, medical terms, uh, it, in addition to all the woo-woo stuff that we're doing, is I think it, it's, it's gives a different perspective and it also allows a certain amount of um, uh, impetus to to do it, you know. If you if you know that something good is happening, that's making your body, mind, more, making it healthier. Then there's uh, there's more impetus to do it rather than just like, hey, that's a cool feeling. So uh, one thing I want to talk about is uh, I think we've mentioned a little bit recently, but I uh, want to get back to it. And that is the idea of learning to control your, your mental state, the actual uh, physical neurochemistry of your body-mind. So learning to actually change your, your neurochemistry uh, through your physical actions, but also through your state of mind and and to also see what kind of research is being done on this, this sort of thing. So the, uh, the, the direction I'm heading with this is to be able to familiarize enough with certain, um, say, neurotransmitters that enable us to then adjust our internal state so that we can access the the cocktail of choice. And um, the one, one thing I, I read recently was someone says, happiness is a, a correct balance of dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, which seemed a bit reductionistic, but 
I got where he's coming from. And that is that you, what you will experience as happiness is not an externally derived set of conditions. Oh, if I have lots of money, I will be happy. Oh, if I have that new car, I will be happy. You know, if I get the right job, I will be happy. It's no, it's being able to adjust your internal state. And I'm much more comfortable thinking of it in terms of energy and thinking in terms of states of consciousness and things like that. But there's also this very grounded approach that sort of in keeping with the, uh, the Taiji Chan through the Western gate kind of mindset. And that is we have to honor the, honor the Western gate because it, uh, it keeps pushing, pushing it forward and keeps establishing a foundation of understanding that permits us to go forward from there. So the, uh, uh, what I'd like to talk to you to, about uh, today is uh, serotonin. And serotonin is one of these neurotransmitters. It's probably, it was the original happiness neurotransmitter that, uh, that was discovered. And most of us know about it as uh, whenever it's lacking in the system, then it's a, a key contributor to depression. So we get a lot of um, uh, what are called SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are drugs which are designed to block the reuptake of the serotonin so that you're basically swimming in the same bathwater for, uh, for a while. You get, it, it doesn't get uh, reabsorbed by the, by the system quite so quickly. So you have more serotonin available, which can then kickstart the, the, uh, the body mind into, into a uh, production of its own. So the uh, things like Prozac and Paxil and uh, um, I think Wellbutrin is one. Anyway, so that, that kind of thing. So if, if we can learn to control our own serotonin and produce it, might be a little bit better, fewer side effects than, than come with, uh, with any kind of, of a biochemical intervention. So the, um, uh, just no, my, my process in this is, is familiarizing myself with enough of what's going on with that particular neurotransmitter and then finding what behaviors, what conditions are present when that is at, at optimum level and then trying to recreate first the activities and then being able to just identify the feeling so that whenever you can identify the feeling, then you can create it yourself. That's the, uh, that's my, my process. And um, so just to give you a, an example of the, uh, of some of the, some of the effects of, uh, of serotonin, it affects your mood, your sexual desire and function, your appetite, sleep, memory and learning, temperature regulation, and some social behavior. It also affects your cardiovascular system, your muscles, uh, parts of the endocrine system, and very important here, the regeneration of brain cells. So that whenever there is a lack of serotonin, then your brain is slowly dying, which they, one theory is that depression may occur when there's a suppression of new brain cells. So, um, you know, the idea there is that if you are not producing new brain cells, you get this signal from your body mind that says, dude, you're dying here. You're get, you know, your brain's dying. And so the, the signal we're getting from it is we get depressed. So the indication there is, oh, I got to create some more brain cells. I got to create some more serotonin so that I can, I have that, because it also affects my mood, my appetite, my, my sex drive, et cetera, et cetera. So the, uh, um, the, what I'd like to do is to uh, do a simple process. Maria's gonna actually lead it on this one. And uh, so much of what we already do, oh, let me just go back and say that 
three things that, that affect serotonin levels that have been identified are one, uh, your, uh, your diet. Uh, uh, more important is exercise, especially vigorous exercise, affects your serotonin levels. And the third and probably most important is how much you, and Rick's gonna like this, how much you beat yourself up. And uh, if you, uh, uh, the more negativity you have in your life, the more suppressed your serotonin is, and it raises your cortisol levels and lowers your serotonin. So then you get into this loop where you, I'm depressed now, and, and then I beat myself up for being depressed, and blah, 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 it goes around and around. So the, uh, I'm much more into, hey, let's create the conditions where we don't have to do any serious interventions. We, and, uh, and again, going into the Rick Myers Bible here, you know, you create a positive state of mind so that you are feeding yourself this positive energy, which lowers your cortisol levels and raises your serotonin levels, creates new brain cells, and everybody wins. So um, uh, one thing that I, um, I think is very helpful for this uh, is to, uh, is a process that, that Maria's gonna show you, but the, um, anything you can do where you're actually feeling into the body, but also bringing with it a positive, like I'm feeling my body and I like it. And I'm like, oh, I feel my body and it's repugnant to me. And you know, I should lose 10 pounds or whatever, but it's no, no, I want to feel my body and oh, I love me, you know, and, and really get into, get into accepting joyfully, you know, exactly what you are, which then elevates your serotonin levels immediately. Okay, so uh, with, uh, you want to pick it up, dude? Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Shift. It came from beneath the sea. <laughs> okay, so um, this is really a way of feeling into your body using acupressure points that are on your main meridians that we use in energy psychology, but this is not energy psychology. This is just a feeling exercise. So I want you to take your fingers and find the spot where your eyebrow starts on the bridge of your nose. And I just want you to touch it and feel your, feel the spot with your fingers and then feel your fingers Wait. through the body with that spot on your head. I do it in a loving way, as Rick says. And just hold it for a sec, a couple seconds. Take two breaths. In through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. And the next point is on where the end of your eyebrow, right? Not on your temple, but just on the bone at the end of your eyebrow. Just press in very gently. You don't have to press deep, just feel that spot. And these are acupuncture points, so you might feel a little pulsing there when you feel into it. But I want you to also feel from the inside of your body, feel your fingers touching that spot and take two breaths. You're really connecting with your body in a peaceful way. Next spot is that stomach meridian point right on your cheekbones, right in line with the pupil of your eye. There. And just press in gently and feel that spot with your fingers and feel your fingers with that spot from inside your body and take two deep breaths.
next spot is right under your nose in the cleft, you know, right there in the, in the middle of the top of your lip and press in and feel the spot with your finger. And this is like the terminal point of, I think, the governing meridian, I'm not sure. Yeah. Inhale and exhale and feel it both, your finger feeling the spot and your the spot from inside feeling the finger. Next point is on the cleft of your chin. Feel the spot with your finger and feel your finger from the inside through the spot. Deep breaths. And then your kidney 27 point, you know, where your collarbone is right down, feel into kidney 27. Again, feel that point with your fingers. And if your energy is flowing beautifully, you might feel a pulsing there, but also feel your fingers from the inside of your body. And this is all done in a calm, loving way. You're saying, body, I want to get in calm. Let's talk. And I guess the last one is the spleen point. On the side, just press in with your fingers. And feel that spot with your fingers. And also feel your fingers from the inside. And again, you might feel a pulsing. And relax. So just touching those points will calm down your triple warmer. It'll relax your stress response. It'll lower your cortisol, which then uh, let's other hormones come into play. And it's something you can do anytime. You don't have to do all the points, do some of the points. But really, really the important thing is to feel both from the outside and from the inside. Because what you're doing is you're communicating with your body in a peaceful, loving way. And you're getting the energy moving at the same time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. That was terrific. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, any questions before we wrap this up? Anybody? All good? That was just lovely. I just want to say that. Oh, wonderful. Good, good, good. And you can feel it. Oh, it, it, it changes everything changes ah but you know as we familiarize with that feeling the ah then we can then go right to the ah <laughs> but have to uh, we don't need to do a lot of uh, a lot of ramping up to get there so that's uh, uh, that's the direction we're headed with this okay and then we'll play around with some more some more of the other ones uh, in the future but that's, that's that'll get us started. Great. Love you all. See you soon. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Maria. Thanks, Thanks, Maria. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you.